Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, I would like to continue the topic uh, of momentum and uh, impulse. Last lecture was about the previous lecture was about momentum of motion, and this will be about the impulse of the force and how they are related to each other. Now, uh, this lecture is presented as part of the course called Physics 14 on Unizor.com. Um, I suggest you to use the website uh, for um, uh, watching this lecture and any other lecture of the course uh, for many different reasons. One reason is uh, every lecture has very detailed notes. Um, another reason is that website contains a prerequisite course, which is Mass for Teens, and especially the vectors and uh, calculus must be really perfect uh, if you would like to master the physics for teen. Uh, and also it has exams, the website, and it's also free, and no advertisement. All right, so back to impulse of the force. Now, um, let's consider a very simple situation when you have uh, a uniform motion of the object of mass A uh, under certain uh, constant force F which basically gives it an acceleration um, A. Now from the second Newton's law we know this. I'm using vectors but whenever it's uniform um, motion it doesn't really matter because it's only one dimensional anyway. Um, okay, anyway, we do have this. Now, what does it actually mean in terms of the speed? Well, speed is increasing. Since we have a constant acceleration, speed is increasing. Uh, and let's say uh, at moment t1 uh, speed was v1 and at moment t2 speed was v2. Now, the increase in speed which is v2 minus v1 um, is acceleration times uh, the time difference, right? That's the basic definition of constant acceleration. It's a division of the difference in speed by difference in time. So that's why we have this. Now obviously if we will multiply it by m both sides um, we can combine these into force, so it would be force times t2 minus t1, and this would be mv2 minus mv1. Now this, as we know, is the momentum of motion. So it's increment of the momentum of motion during period of time from t1 to t2 under the constant force f. Now, obviously this can be written in slightly more, well, scientific or mathematical form, um, which will basically allow us to, to drop the requirement of the constant force. Because if I will make this uh, interval of time infinitesimal, I will have this, and I will have this. Now, obviously now, function can be, uh, force can be a function of t and the speed can be the function of t of the time and they do not necessarily have to be like a uniform force can be changing but during the infinitesimal moment uh, uh, incremented uh, uh, time we will have an infinitesimal increment of the um, moment of motion and uh, this would be true even for variable force. Okay, so now this is increment of um, momentum of the motion. Now this is an impulse which acted during this time uh, because there is this particular force. So this is basically a definition of what impulse is. So impulse is the product of the force times the time interval, and that gives you the increment of the uh, momentum uh, caused by this force acting during this time. 
Okay, so that's basically all about definitions, which we can express it in this form, or we can express it in a slightly different form, well actually in more than one slightly different form. Now the same thing can be done like this. And this is also a function of t. Now this is basically a derivative, right? So you can write it this way. That's just a different notation of, uh, of a derivative. This versus this. But we also can do from here an integral uh, formulation of this equality between increment of the momentum and um, and the uh, impulse of the force. Because if I will integrate this from let's say moment t1 to t2, what happens? Well this is the full differential. So after the increment, uh, after integration it would be mv of t2 minus mv of t1. That's on the left side, because it's full differential. On the right side, I will leave whatever it is. So this is an integral um, formulation uh, of this equality. And again, this is an increment in momentum, but not in an infinitesimal um, uh, period of time t but during a substantial from t1 to t2, any substantial interval, as long as we know how the function behaved, uh, I mean the, the force function behaved, we can integrate it uh, by time, and that would give me the increment in uh, momentum of motion. Now, in a particular case of uh, function f of t, um, let's say this function was constant in one period and then constant in another period. That's kind of easier to integrate because it's really a sum of two. So if my function f of t is equal to, let's say, f1, on the this is a constant, on the period le from, uh, let's say, from 0 to t1, and it, it, it's equal to f2 on a time period from t1 to t2, then this integral for an entire period from 0 to t2 is basically a sum of 2, right? So it's integral from 0 to t1, and now the function is a constant, right? plus integral from t1 to t2 of another constant, which is f1 times 0 minus t, uh, sorry, t1 minus 0, which is t1, plus f2 t2 minus t1. So this is the impulse of the function exhorted uh, from t1 to t2, and this is the impulse exor exhorted by the, fu by the force uh, from the period from 0 to t1, right? So in any case, that, and that would be in this case from 0, right? So in this case, all I'm saying is that the increment of the entire um, moment of motion in this particular case can be represented as sum of impulse on one and impulse on another period of time. All right? So, basically that's it about definition of what uh, impulse of force is and uh, equivalence of the increment of the momentum with um, impulse uh, exhorted by the force during the time we are measuring. 
And again, this is uh, this uh, impulse is additive. Uh, it, it's basically like if you are adding one uh, teaspoon of sugar into your tea, and then another, the result will be exactly the same as if you will add two together at the same time. So this additiveness is very very important because each um, teaspoon of sugar contributes certain sweetness uh, and two teaspoons will con uh, 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 sequentially or consecutively applied to tea will give exactly the same sweetness as if you just put them together and do it in one time. Same thing with, with this. Your sweetness of uh, momentum of motion will increase first by one impulse and then another or we have, if we can, we can combine them together and that basically gives you exactly the same thing. So if I apply only this one, F1, T1, to my uh, motion, I will have increment from uh, T1 minus M V of zero, right? This is what this guy does. Then, having already my momentum reached this point, I can apply this thing and I will get MV uh, of T2 minus MV of T1. And if I will add them together, this will cancel and again I will have an entire increment of my momentum or sweetness of the tea. So that's the additiveness of impulse um, applied to increment of the momentum. Now uh, I have a couple of examples where I can actually demonstrate it. One example is well basically exactly what I just did right now with the function uh, which represents the force actually is a constant on one period and then constant on another period. Same, same thing basically. I'll just use different notation. So let's say you have one force which acts during the time T1. So that's basically T1 um, from 0 to T1 if you wish. But anyway, this is the number of seconds this particular function acts upon certain um, object. And then during another number of seconds, the T2 number of seconds, this uh, uh, function, which is equal to constant F2, acts on the same object. So let's just analyze the first increment of momentum and then the second. So the first increment of momentum would be uh, M Uh, times v of 0 to m v of 0 plus f times f1 times t1 which is equal to m v of t1 right so we have this is the old momentum at point 0 this is additional impulse which we give to this which is increment and that would be equal to my um, uh, momentum at time uh, T1. Then, during the time T2 after that, I will have from MV of T1 to MV of T1 plus F2 T2. Right? And that's, that's my MV of T2. Again, we have this particular impulse applied to already achieved before momentum of motion and this is my result. So I can do it in two steps. Now at the same time I can do it in one step basically combining F1 T1 plus F2 T2 and that would be my combined motion which is MV of T2 already minus MV of zero obviously. So this is again just an illustration in a different kind of way of additiveness. And, um, and then I would like to solve using this to solve one particular problem 
um, which kind of has a pretense to be uh, from the real life, but it's not really. Anyway, I would like to measure um, what kind of resistance the air uh, presents to the flying airplane. Now, how can I do it? Um, let's assume you have a plane. It has engine. Now, what engine of the plane does? Well, there are certain input coming into the combustion chamber coming um, uh, whatever whatever the fuel fuel is some kind of a liquid okay then it burns here and the gases are pushed back that's basically how uh, jets are flying right so some liquid is um, coming into this combustion chamber and the gases are flying back and that's what pushes the plane forward now why is it pushing the planes forward well there is a third newton's law right we are pushing gases this way and the third law gives us the reaction force which is equal and um, and so the whole plane is moving forward just because of this reaction force okay now let's assume that my pumps which are pumping liquid whatever the liquid fuel is are working at capacity uh, mu kilogram per second well that's basically the same kind of amount of mass which is going out every second right whatever we're pumping in burns and as gases uh, it is it's pushing back with a relatively high speed right so during certain time t second we are pumping mu times t mass of the fuel all right now um, let's imagine that these gases are coming out with certain speed v out then this is the momentum of the gases which are coming back right now this momentum should be equal to the force which we are applying to the gases or gases applying to us times the same t so this is the equivalent of the momentum and the impulse so that's how we get the, uh, the, the, uh, the force f and by the way the t now is cancelling so basically f is equal to mu times v out so this is uh, amount of fuel which we are pumping in the unit of time and this is the speed the gases are actually going out so this is, therefore, the force which goes this way. Now the plane goes with a constant speed. Now, where is this particular force then? What is it wasted for? Well, it's basically wasted for resistance of the air. So there is a, the same by magnitude force of resistance of the air, and that's how we are traveling with a constant speed when when uh, 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 the airplane is already in route to something I mean we're not talking about initial um, uh, going out from the from the from the ground I mean there are many different forces which are acting in, in, in those times but when it's already on um, on the course uh, for, for for a long time it goes with a uniform speed and basically the fact that the speed is constant there is no acceleration means that this force and this force are equal in magnitude and um, opposite uh, in direction so this is just one of the example of how you can calculate something like air resistance knowing basically your engine parameters of, of the plane right okay 
that's it for today. This is a relatively short uh, lecture because the concept is rel relatively simple, but there are problems and there are exams and everything is on unizor.com and I do suggest you to, well, you can read first the notes for this lecture, obviously, and then if there are any problems presented, I will explain certain problems in, in the lectures, but uh, I always ask you to try to solve these problems yourself first and then listen to whatever my solutions are. All right, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.